هل يمكن ان نبدا ولا ننتظر سيدات والسادة مرحبا بكم اسمحوا لي بداية أن أرحب بكم في هذه الجلسة الهادفة إلى تسليط الضوء على الإمكانات الاقتصادية والتجارية للتعاون مع إيران أرحب بكم جميعا أرحب بمعالي وزير الخارجية والمغتربين سيد جبران باسيل مرحبا بكم مع الوزير أرحب طبعا بكل الضيوف الكرام والذين سيشاركون أو ستكون لهم مداخلات في هذه الجلسة التي تعقد تحت عنوان استكشاف إيران من منظار لبناني طبعا هناك مداخلات لعدد من الخبراء المختصين من إيران وأيضا لعدد من الخبراء اللبنانيين في القطاعات المالية قبل أن أبدأ وأن أعرف بالضيوف وأن ننطلق بهذه الجلسة أود أن أقدم نبذة صغيرة فقط عن تاريخ العلاقات الإيرانية اللبنانية العلاقات اللبنانية الإيرانية ليست بجديدة لكنها لم تسجل تقدما إلا قبل نحو عقدين من الزمن قبل ربع قرن تقريبا عمد البلدان إلى تشكيل لجنة اقتصادية مشتركة جرى بعدها التوقيع على اتفاقات عدة شملت قطاعات مختلفة منها النقل البري، التجارة البحرية، الجمارك، النقل الجوي إضافة إلى اتفاقيات عديدة لن أدخل بها وسأترك يعني التطرق إليها إلى الضيوف الكرام إيران اليوم تخرج من قيود الحظر والمقاطعة وهي تتلمس طريقها نحو النهضة الاقتصادية وتوسيع تجارتها مع العالم إما مباشرة وإما عبر شق قنوات تعامل اقتصادي ومصرفي بصورة غير مباشرة كما هي الحال مع العلاقات المستجدة مع الشركات الأمريكية عبر فروعها في أوروبا وطبعا بموافقة واشنطن هذه الجلسة إذا التي تعقد تحت عنوان استكشاف إيران من منظار لبناني ستحاول ليس فقط أن تستطلع الفرص المتاحة للربط بين قطاعي الاقتصاد في لبنان وإيران وإنما ستعمل أيضا على تسليط الضوء على الفرص الواعدة المتاحة لخلق تعاون وتنسيق اقتصادي وتجاري بين قطاعي الأعمال في البلدين المجالات التي ستتطرق إليها أو ستتطرق إليها نخبة من المتحدثين من المسؤولين والاقتصاديين ورجال الأعمال في كلا البلدين تشمل القطاع المصرفي المالي خدمات التأمين فرص الاستثمار والأعمال وتطوير قطاع تكنولوجيا المعلومات أيضا النفط والغاز قطاع الغذاء وصناعة السياحة والسفر والإعلام والإعلام ماذا يمكن للبنان أن يقدم بجالياته المهاجرة وشبكات العلاقات والشركات الدولية التي يقيمها رجال الأعمال فيه وبقطاعاته المصرفية والصناعية والحجم الكبير للمهارات المتوافرة في أسواقه للتعامل مع إيران هذا البلد العملاق اقتصاديا وسكانيا والذي يضم نحو ثمانين مليون مستهلك هذا ما ستحاول جلستنا اليوم الإجابة عليه وقبل أن أترك الكلمة للضيوف الكرام كل لمداخلة حول قطاع ما أرحب مجددا بكم وأعرف بضيوفنا رئيس الوفد القادم من طهران السيد مجتبى خسرو تاج وكيل وزارة الصناعة والتجارة والمناجم السيد حسين رازقي وكيل منظمة التراث الثقافي والمشغولات اليدوية والسياحة أيضا هو يشغل منصب مدير عام مكتب التسهيلات والاستثمارات الأجنبية في المنظمة السيدة أفروز بهرامي مدير عام الاستثمارات الأجنبية في وزارة الصناعة والتجارة والمناجم السيد مرتضى الزكوات مدير شؤون التخطيط وتطوير البرامج في بنك تنمية الصادرات إكزيم بنك والسيد مهدي النمان الحسيني مدير المشاريع والتنمية في شركة التأمين المركزي أذكر الأسماء بالتوالي لأنهم سيلقون كلماتهم بالتوالي أيضا من لبنان سيكون معنا السيد عباس فواز رئيس جمعية رجال الأعمال الإيرانيين واللبنانيين السيد فراس صفي الدين العضو المتفرغ في مجلس إدارة هيئة الأسواق المالية في لبنان ومعنا أيضا السيد مهدي فيروزان رجل الأعمال والخبير في شؤون النفط والغاز وفي الختام سنستمع إلى تجربة لعائلة لبنانية نجحت في أن تثبت حضورها في الأسواق الإيرانية منذ عقود منذ عقود طويلة وهي نجحت في أن تحتل مكانة مرموقة في قطاع التجارة وأيضا الصناعة أتحدث هنا عن السيد باتريك جميل الذي سيلخص لنا مسيرة هذا النجاح وأيضا الأفاق المتاحة لرجال الأعمال وكيفية الولوج إلى الأسواق الإيرانية 
اسمحوا لي اذا ان اترك الكلمه الان للسيد مجتبى خسرو تاج وكيل وزاره الصناعه والتجاره والمناجم تفضل سيدي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the name of god the compassionate the merciful i am very glad to have this opportunity to be among our brothers and sisters, friends from Lebanon, that they are active internationally and they are operating in the international world. I, as a first vice minister in charge of trade, with 37 years experience in the foreign trade of Islamic Republic of Iran, I am very glad that today I have the opportunity to open for our friends the capacity that we have in our country, whether economically or from trade point of view, and to explore the capacity that our friends from Lebanon can cooperate internationally. I also congratulate to His Excellency, the Minister of Foreign Trade of Lebanon, for such kind of very important gathering and for the opportunity which has created for us to raise the area of, of cooperation with our friends from Lebanon. I understood the time is very short, so I have to go very fast. I have provided some slides, maybe to some time to somehow uh, can go very fast about the information. Okay, these are the general information in regard of Iran. Everybody knows about the capacity, the size, the population, and the uh, export import that we have for your information during the sanction time okay it all together took something around 12 years uh, the sanction period so before the sanction we were faced with the war that we were engaged with iraq so all this situation push us to rely on our self-sufficiency and to rely on our uh, production within the country so i can tell you we are one of the countries that we are relying too much on our local capacity. We are not very much relying on the foreign trade. I cannot say this policy was right or wrong, but we were pushed to choose such kind of policy because a country which is facing war in the Persian Gulf or sometimes are facing with the sanction, we should think that we have to manage our economy in such a way that whatever we are in need, we can manage and we do not have any problem in the procurement of the items that we have. And also, at the same time, we had the duty or we had the responsibility to get free from the export of crude oil. Maybe most of you are still thinking Iran is a country of oil. But for your information, what I can show you right now, our dependency on the crude oil has been diminishing and diminishing. So these days, even this year in our budget, our total de dependency from revenue, from the exportation of the crude oil has reduced to 25%. So I myself and the nation whole at the whole will not consider Iran anymore a country of the crude oil. We will consider Iran a country with diversified source of industry, agricultural products, mining products. So, to be frank with you, uh, those that who think to work with Iran, they have to see the new capacity which has been created in Iran in regard of the industry, mining and agriculture. For just giving some idea what we have done so far in the in the Australian field, I have just chosen some of the items that show to you the capacity that we have in the industrial side. As you can see, the first item which goes to the petrochemicals, presently we are producing something around 58 million tons of petrochemicals, and we have seen in our next 10-year plan it reached to 130 million tons. Presently we are producing 30 billion dollars of petrochemicals, which 50% are consumed internally and 15% and 50% exported outside Iran toward foreign countries. 
So we have been able to use the crude oil and the gas resources in the petrochemical fields in a very good manner. And today we are one of the key players of the petrochemicals in the region. In regard of medicine, for your information, for example, 50 billion uh, I mean, uh, units uh, are, uh, of different kind of medicines are produced and we are going to increase it to 60 billion in the near future. In the tiles industry, almost 500 million square meter, the amount of, in the construction material, for your information, in the construction material, all items which are needed in the construction Presently, not only we are producing, we are also exporting. So you can see on the tile, on the steel, on the aluminum, on the cathode, uh, or on the lead, LCD, tire tube. In all these items, the country has created a huge amount. And these are the areas that we have also export capacity. Just for the passenger car, for your information, uh, we have presently 1.9 million units of passenger cars that we have the capacity to produce. Last year, our production was 1.2 million units of passenger car. And uh, we are uh, going to increase it to 3 million tons by 2025. This is our program that to increase on that area. On the other area, again, on the industrial side, as you can see, on the industrial equipment, on the refrigerators and freezers, on the washing machine, on the cooler, on the textile, raw materials like acrylic yarn, like polyester yarn, these are all from petrochemicals that presently we are producing. It was the wish of the Shah during the old regime that to go from gas to textile. I will tell you that today we are able to have the whole chain from the gas resources to the textile industry, so we have been able to materialize the gas resources in a very good manner by having aromatics, producing aromatics, and all items which are needed in the petrochemical industry. So uh, these are some of the area that uh, it is, it was my understanding, those people that who are visiting Iran, they will tell me that uh, it is unbelievable that in different area, country has done such kind of production capacity, and country uh, are relying on its shoes. One of the very key points that we are uh, relying on that is the human resources. We believe if we want uh, to go uh, on a developed, uh, among developed countries, we have to rely on our human resources. So as you can see from this slide, just the number of public universities we have something around 119 public university, university by learning, uh, learning by distance, 550, applied university, 739, private university, 295, Azad Islamic University, these universities were created after the revolution. It is somehow private, semi-private. It is 385 university, higher education institution, 274, and higher education, institution affiliated with other organization 28. So huge investment has been done in regard of the higher education and in regard of the university. And you can see at the same time, we have tried on the scientific technology park, something around 336 scientific technology park we have created, incubators almost 154, and active company in ST parks, we have 3,500 company that who are active in the scientific technology park. And also the employee that who are working, it is something around 25,000. So scientific technology is the area that presently we're working. Just for your information, the number of the students that presently who study at the university, it is 4 million point seven hundred thousand. So you can imagine it is more than the population of the Lebanon. We have only a student university. And if we go to associate students, more than 1 million, master students, 580,000, master universities students, PhD 73,000, PhD students. So on the professional doctorate and also on the bachelor students, you will see also only 3 million bachelor students presently studying in Iran. I believe uh, this is 
uh, human resources is our key competitive point that we are relying on that and we believe on such a source we would be able to go on a developed path and we are very proud of such kind of young educated people that today are in our country. Just give you some advantage that we have on the agricultural side. According to FAO, the principal structure of the world, agricultural products is composed of 66 different products. And Iran is among the top 10 uh, uh, countries producing 15 types of these kind of products. Iran rank number third on diversity of agriculture. For your information, Iran, uh, we have four season for full season, winter, spring, summer, and autumn, we have the four full season. The lowest and the highest temperature sometimes goes between 30 to, 30 to 40 centigrade. Such kind of gap between the uh, temperature and also 300 days of sunny days. We have 300 sunny days. So when a country has such kind of sunny days and such kind of gap or temperature difference, that enable the country to create good taste material with good uh, products and everything. So, uh, you know, the alarm has started. So I have to go very fast. So one of the areas that we have a very good comparative advantage is the agricultural products that I will be very glad, all those companies that who are. This year, we have seen something around $5 billion. Our exportation of the agricultural products would be this year. And three billion dollars, five billion dollars agricultural products and three billion dollars industrial food items. Altogether, eight billion dollars we have envisaged for the exportation of this year. If, to be very fast, these are some of the area that uh, uh, after uh, agriculture, maybe I can go to some of the, uh, excuse me, just maybe I have to use my glasses. Yes, here you can see some of the advantage that we have on the mining side, iron ore on the bauxite and on the barite and on the uh, bentonite, you will see, and on the coal, our rank on the world and also the share of the production of the total share of the world production that we have in the country. Uh, and also, uh, this gives you some idea what we are going to have in 2006, uh, 2016, as you have seen something around to $70 billion we have envisage this year to be our exportation, something for uh, almost uh, 15 to 16 billion dollars would be the service industry, and the remaining, which is around about 50 billion dollars, would be the commodity export target that we have. Here are some of the area that, for example, in metals, we have seen something around 600 million dollars of exportation, on the auto industry, 500, and the remaining are some other uh, uh, figures that we have for exportation. I wish to have some more chance to give more details in regard of mining and in regard of the service industry. But anyhow, I will leave it to the question and answering. And I hope on that part, I try to also show in different region, in different countries, uh, in the uh, South America, in North America, in the Asian countries, the uh, Lebanese friends, what they can do with Iran and how they would be able to do with us, but maybe that could be raised during the answer and question. Thank you for your attention. Shukran to Dr. Mushtaba Khosro Taj, Wakil Wazarat Sina'a, Wat Tijara Wal Manajim. Before I turn the word to the other people, I only want to ask a question on Dr. Khosro Taj, and maybe I'll ask him later. يعني بعد ما كل ما عرضه حول ما تنتجه وما تصدره إيران قد يكون من الملح أن نعرف أيضا ما الذي تنتظره إيران من الشركات ورجال الأعمال اللبنانيين ربما يجيب على هذا السؤال لاحقا الآن الكلمة لسيد حسين رازقي وكيل منظمة التراث الثقافي والمشغولات اليدوية والسياحة وأيضا مدير عام مكتب التسهيلات والاستثمارات الأجنبية في المنظمة تفضل سيدي الله الرحمن الرحیم من 
بسخای میکنم صحبت کردن انگلیسی خیلی قبول نیست و فارسی صحبت انا غیر مستطیع ان تحدث بالانگلیزی لذا سوف اتحدث بالفارسی اما دیگه سوف اتحدث عنه الان هو حول الاسواق الموجوده في ايران خاصه على الصعيد السياحي پتانسیل های صنعت گردشگری ایران قدرت القطاع الصناعي السياحي في ايران از نظر جاذبه های تاريخي و ايران تتمتع تعتبر ضمن اول عشر دول في العالم من ناحية الجاذبية التاريخية والطبيعية ولديها أكثر من 30 ألف أثر تاريخي مسجل رسميا في إيران ومن بينها 19 أثر تاريخي مسجل دوليا الأمن والاستقرار السياسي والاقتصاد الذي تعيشه البلاد الموقع الجغرافي المتميز للبلاد فإيران هي من الدول التي تتمتع بالفصول الأربعة وهناك إمكانية لزيارتها في كافة هذه الفصول الصناعات اليدوية الإيرانية هي تجل للفن والحضارة والثقافة العريقة الموجودة في إيران وأيضا هناك وجود الأماكن الدينية المقدسة في إيران وأيضا التقارب الثقافي الموجود بين البلدين بين إيران ولبنان الوضع الراهن للصناعة السياحية في إيران وخاصة في العام 2015 قدوم أكثر من خمسة ملايين ونصف سائح مليون سائح أجنبي خلال العام المنصرم هناك أكثر من 100 مليون سفر داخلي على امتداد البلاد خلال العام المنصرم تشكل السياحة الإيرانية نسبة 2.5% من الجي تي بي للاقتصاد الإيراني وتؤمن السياحة 2% من فرص العمل المتاحة في الاقتصاد الإيراني وتحتل السياحة في إيران نسبة 3.2% من مجمل الاستثمارات الموجودة في الاقتصاد الإيراني هناك أربعين فندق خمس نجوم ومئة وخمس فنادق أربعة نجوم على امتداد البلاد هناك عشرين مطار على امتداد البلاد وهي مؤهلة لاستقبال الرحلات الدولية وهناك أكثر من ميتان وستين ألف سرير في مختلف الفنادق الموجودة في إيران الخطط الحكومية المعتمدة لتطوير الصناعة السياحية في إيران الوصول إلى رقم 20 مليون سائح خارجي أو أجنبي في نهاية البرنامج السادس للتطوير أي خلال العام 2021 اعتبار قطاع السياحة في إيران كأحد أهم القطاعات الرافعة للاقتصاد الإيراني في برامج التنمية الحكومية وتأسيس وإقامة على الأقل 100 فندق من فئة خمسة نجوم و300 فندق من فئة أربعة نجوم حتى نهاية العام 2021 تتوخى الحكومة الإيرانية أن تصل مساهمة السياحة في إيران إلى ما نسبته 3% من الجي تي بي, جي بي, دي بي في الاقتصاد الإيراني المزايا التنافسية المتاحة للاستثمار في قطاع السياحة في إيران مستوى الحجوزات المرتفع في فنادق الخمس نجوم أكثر من تسعين في المئة والتوجه نحو استحداث المزيد من الفنادق الفاخرة في المدن الإيرانية الهامة الأخرى من كأسفهان وشيراز ويزد وتبريز قطاع السياحة يعتبر أحد أهم أو أكثر القطاعات الاقتصادية الإيرانية لناحية الحرية الاقتصادية حيث أن الحكومة الإيرانية تترك هذا النشاط بشكل كامل للقطاع الخاص والمسار التصاعدي لقدوم السياح الأجانب إلى إيران خاصة في السنوات الأخيرة
هزینه پایین سفر به ایران برای گردشگران خارجی التكلفة الزهيدة للسفر إلى إيران بنسبة للسياح الأجانب وضعيت رقابتي سرمايه گذاري در ایران المزايا التنافسية للاستثمار في قطاع السياحة الإيراني وضعيت ویژه ایران در گردشگری سلامت و گردشگری مذهبی من المزايا الكبرى هي مزايا ایران التنافسية في مجال السياحة الصحية والسياحة الدينية تنسيل بالای گردشگری داخلی ایران والمؤهلات والقدرات الكبرى الموجودة في السياحة الداخلية في إيران والتوقعات الإيجابية للمنظمات الدولية المعنية في قطاع السياحة مثل WTO و WTTC المحفزات وأوجه الدعم امکان سرمایه گذاری خارجی بسید صد در صد در ترهای سرمایه گذاری هناك امکانی لقدوم الاستثمارات الاجنبی الى ایران بنسبت مئه فی المئه فی المجالات والمشاریع المتعلقه بقطاع السیاحه امکان تملک زمین بنام شرکت خارجی سعب شده در ایران و هناك امکانی لاستملاك عقارات و اراد لصالح شرکات اجنبی و تسجیلها بشکل رسمی فی ایران معافیت صد در صدی درامد حاصل از گردشگران برای پنج سال الإعفاء الضريبي بنسبة 100% للمداخيل المتأتية من من السياح خلال السنوات الخمس الأولى. وبراي مناطق محروم 10 سنة. وللمناطق المحرومة لمدة 10 سنوات تمتد فترة السماح الضريبي. إمكان إعطاء تحصيلات من محل منابع صندوق توسعه ملي إيران. هناك إمكانية لتقديم التحصيلات المصرفية من قبل مؤسسة الصندوق الوطني للتنمية والتطوير. کمک به ایجاد زیرساخت‌های عمومی، راه دسترسی آب، برق و گاز. و المساعده و المؤازر التي يمكن ان تقدم في مجال الاستثمارات المتعلقه بالبنى التحتيه كالطرق والمياه والكهرباء والغاز. تأمین اراضی مورد نیاز برای ایجاد و توسعه هتل‌ها و اقامتگاه‌ها. و تأمین الاراضی و العقارات اللازمه لاقامه الفنادق و اماکن الاقامه او تطوير هذه الاماکن. پرداخت عوارض ناشی از تغییر کاربری و فروش تراکم بسرعت غزتی پنج تا ده سال پس از بحر برداری و دفع الرسوم المترتبة على تغییر الطبيعة الاستثمارية للعقارات على شكل اقساط تتراوح مدتها من خمس الى عشر سنوات شكر میکنم از وصله شما شكرا جزيلا لحسن استماعكم شكرا للسيد حسين رزقي وكيل منظمة التراث الثقافي والمشغولات اليدوية والسياحة الذي عرض لواقع القطاع السياحي إذا في إيران وما تتضمنه من إمكانيات للاستثمار خصوصا في ما يتعلق بمجال الإعفاءات التي تحدث عنها في ختام كلمته على كل حال الآن نتحول إلى السيدة أفروز بهرمي وهي مدير عام الاستثمارات الأجنبية في وزارة الصناعة والتجارة والمناجم تفضلي سيدتي Ladies and gentlemen, good morning It's my great pleasure and honor to participate in this forum and for the opportunity of talking here uh, I would like to thank uh, Lebanese for uh, warm welcoming and kind hospitalities uh, I'm going to present some uh, key points about uh, Iran capabilities and opportunities. Uh, then I explain the incentives which are considered uh, for investors in Iran. And finally, I will propose some selected projects. Uh, those are feasible and appropriate for investing in Iran based on feasibility study of uh, these projects. Uh, and I hope I've been able to give you an uh, overview of foreign investment uh, in Iran. Uh, as you know, there are lots of capabilities in Iran in different areas. Uh, Iran holds more than 1% of uh, world population and provides a domestic market of 78 million people, uh, as well as quick access to neighboring uh, market uh, with approximately uh, 400 million inhabitants. Uh, there is access to international sea water, and access to transit capacity and trade corridors. Uh, in addition, uh, there are reliable educated manpower and lots of efficient engineers at very competitive cost in diversified industrial fields. Uh, 
furthermore, we have uh, developed infrastructure and developed networking in the area of telecommunication, road, and railways across the country. Uh, there is the 13,000 kilometer railway, 220,000 kilometer road network, uh, with 30 million tons capacity, and uh, 753 industrial zone, 11 commercial port, and seven uh, free trade zone, and 25 a special economic zone. Uh, also, Iran uh, is the first uh, country in the world in terms of natural, car uh, natural gas reserves and fourth in the world in terms of oil reserves. Uh, actually, there are 11% of the world's uh, proven oil reserves and 15% uh, of the world's proven gas reserves in the Iran. Also, the amount of electricity generation is 75,000 megawatts. In addition uh, to these potentials, there are considerable incentives uh, in terms of uh, tax uh, exemption and custom duty in Iran. Uh, as you see in this slide, all machinery and equipment uh, of a production line all over the country are custom duty free. Also raw material, which is used for production of export goods in all over the country is custom duty free. And in free zone and special economic zones, uh, in addition to above mentioned items, raw material and parts to be used in production line are custom duty free. Uh, one of the greatest investment incentives in Iran is related to tax holidays uh, on corporate income. As you consider in this slide, all income uh, earned by agricultural activities and also income gained by export uh, will be exempt from taxation. Also in order to encourage domestic and foreign investors in Iran tourism sectors, 50% uh, tax exemption is considered for this sector. In addition, uh, there is fixed corporate income tax at a flat rate of 25%. Uh, for industrial and the mining and tourism investment, there is zero rated tax uh, at least five years. Tax exemption period will be increased to 10 years in less developed region and also will be 20 years in free zones. Uh, as you know, positive results of negotiation between Iran and six major power of the world uh, in field of nuclear energy opened a new atmosphere in Iran for developing uh, economic international relationship. And uh, in this period, uh, our strategy and cooperation model uh, is long-term cooperation, foreign direct investment under license production, uh, technology transfer, and research and development cooperation. Uh, so foreign investors could establish a company in Iran independently uh, with 100% of ownership and management or establish a common firm with domestic partners uh, without any limitation of foreign investor share percentage. Uh, we have offered the list of 13 fields of investment based on uh, our strategic plan, consists of automotive, marine, locomotive, uh, non-metallic mineral product, oil and gas, downstream industries, uh, petrochemical and chemical, basic metal, textile industries, mine and mineral industries, high-tech industries, ambient communication, rubber and plastic industries, food industries, uh, industrial machinery and uh, equipment, uh, electrical and power equipment, uh, and household appliances. Uh, finally, we propose 20 projects for uh, investing in Iran, uh, it's not possible to explain about this project because of lack of the time, uh, but uh, there are general specification, specification and brief information of this selected project in the brochures and CD, those are distributed. Uh, I hope this information helps you for better decision making 
and thank you for kind attention and hope to further negotiation and uh, further cooperation in the uh, near future. Thank you. شكرا لك سيدتي الكريمة على الالتزام بالوقت الممنوح للكلمات لأن ذلك سيسمح في نهاية هذه الجلسة على الأقل لمن يرغب بطرح الأسئلة والحصول على بعض الأجوبة بشأن الاستفسارات شكرا لك مرة أخرى الآن الكلمة للسيد مرتضى زكوات مدير شؤون التخطيط وتطوير البرامج في بنك تنمية الصادرات بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن دينا مافقات I'm very glad and pleased to have a, such an opportunity uh, to um, have a short presentation for you, a very distinguished guest, an honor to have a, such an opportunity and thank you my colleagues to have a very good and detailed uh, presentation uh, on uh, economic opportunity and potential of uh, Islamic Republic of Iran. As mentioned by uh, my colleagues, uh, there are a lot of opportunity in different sectors of our country, but to be fair, it's just necessary, not sufficient. To be developed uh, uh, economy in the world, uh, we need a banking uh, relationship with other people and also collaboration and cooperation in the uh, financial sector. I would like to uh, present you very short presentation about uh, Iranian banking system capabilities uh, to support mutual economic activities. First of all, let me uh, uh, explain a short uh, information about Iranian banking system. There are two kinds of banks in our country. First of all, uh, uh, commercial uh, government-owned banks, and secondly, special, specialized government-owned banks. Um, and one of the most, um, I mean, important banks, as many, uh, indicated in the slide, is just Export Development Bank of Iran, which is the uh, Exim Bank of Iran, uh, and I would like uh, to give you more information about our services and in next uh, uh, slides. And there are uh, 22 uh, non-government-owned commercial banks in Iran, and also non-bank credit institution. So uh, there are a lot of banks, just like Lebanon in in our country. And uh, to be fair, uh, a lot of economic uh, activities uh, is going on with the, I mean, uh, banking system. Around the 70 or 80 percent of our economy uh, belongs to banking operation. Recently, we have a very huge, uh, I mean, growth in banking operation in. Uh, deposit and uh, capital by injection of a different kind of resource uh, um, uh, of uh, Central Bank of Iran. And as mentioned in the slide, uh, the uh, activities of bank uh, are uh, growing and we will expect more growth in this sector. Uh, as mentioned, the banking operation uh, is very, very important to boost economic relationship and some kind of, uh, I mean, uh, prerequisite for trade and economic relationship between countries, uh, especially with the country in the region, uh, neighborhood country, Lebanon, Middle East countries. So it's very essential. Also, uh, also uh, there, there is some barriers. Uh, I mean, political values and uh, prim uh, primary sanction of the United States after lifting nuclear sanction, uh, but there is a, a very uh, uh, strong willingness to continue the process of uh, banking operation with Iran, and 
uh, I suppose more or less in the near future we have a very competitive situation for the international banks to come Iran and have a relationship with our bank. And uh, the very important issue regarding banking uh, system is just punctuality to, uh, 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 to uh, uh, I mean, commit uh, due and pay due uh, in a banking operation. And in uh, 60 years, um, uh, uh, in spite of a hard financial situation, uh, Iran has uh, always been uh, punctuated, punctual in the statement, uh, settlement of the obligation. No default happens, even in the hard time of sanction of the United States. And uh, in issuing LCs, no one asked to confirm our LC. So it's because of a strong position of our banking system. And after uh, lifting, uh, I mean, sanction, uh, there is very a good opportunity for uh, international bank to come Iran and we have a different a delegation in Iran and uh, a discussion on the uh, process. Uh, we have a delegation from uh, EU, uh, France, Italy and recently from uh, South Korea and uh, very soon they will to establish uh, uh, will establish a, a representative office in Iran and even a branch of Korean Bank in Iran. So it's good news and uh, it, it signals that uh, in the near future we have a, a such opportunity to, for international uh, banking. And because of the limitation of time, uh, let me uh, go to Export Development Bank of Iran which is uh, that uh, I'm a member uh, of this bank. It, as I mentioned, uh, it is a very specialized bank for export promotion. Uh, it's established uh, 21 uh, years ago as an Iranian exam, uh, exim, oh, sorry. And there are a lot of uh, banking operations that we can present for our customer. Uh, opening different kind of accounts and uh, 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 issuing LC and LG. And in export part and import part, we have uh, different kind of credits, suppliers credits for our exporters. And more important for you, Lebanese, and uh, uh, a buyer's credit uh, uh, by which we lend the loan to for uh, buyers in different parts of the world, for example, Lebanese, to purchase Iranian goods and services. And uh, also we uh, have a, a project finance services. Um, uh, different kind of uh, plants could be financed, especially power plants, petrochemical, and uh, in huge, uh, I mean, uh, plants, we participate in syndicated loan and co-financing for large projects. Uh, for the last, I mean, thing, let me say to my colleague in Lebanon banks, there is a very good opportunity to come to Iran and uh, have a, a banking relationship with Iran because very soon the market is very competitive uh, and final. Uh, final thanks for your uh, presence and kind attention. Thank you very much. Shukran Lek Said Murtada Zakawak, Mudir Shun Tahtit wa Tatwir al Baramij, Fi Bank Tanmiat al Sadirat, Walla Di Kadamalana Ardan and Al Furas al Mutaha, Fi Iran, Wabikasa Fil Kita al Masrifi, Wa Aidan al Hawafiz al Lati Yumkin. لمن يرى في الاستثمار في الحصول عليها تطرق أيضا إلى نقطة مهمة وهي موضوع العقوبات الدولية التي كما نعلم جميعا لم ترفع بالكامل قد يكون من المناسب ربما لمن يرغب أو في الحصول على بعض النقاط أو توضيحات للمستثمرين لأنه في قطاعات لا تزال حتى الآن خاضعة لمنطق العقوبات الدولية 
كنا نتحدث اذا واستمعنا الى هذه المداخله حول القطاع المصرفي الان يعني قطاع اخر لا يقل اهميه هو قطاع التامين واعاده التامين السيد مهدي نعمان الحسيني هو مدير المشاريع والتنميه في شركه التامين المركزي وهو سيقدم لنا من دون شك عرضا لهذا القطاع الحيوي والمهم في بلد طبعا مثل ايران في 80 مليون نسمه بما يعنيه ذلك من سوق واعده لمن يرى في الدخول في هذا القطاع. تفضل. In the name of God, in Iranian insurance market, we have premium volume about seven thousand. Uh, 500 million dollars and uh, change grows 26 percent uh, and issue a number of policy about 50 mil uh, million policy and ranking in board uh, 45 uh, and in index insurance, insurance penetration about 2% and insurance density about uh, $100. In Iran, we have 30 com insurance company. One of them is governmental and 29 private uh, 26 company is composite company and composite activity in life and non-life insurance and two company activity in reinsurance and two company activity in PNI club uh, we have 1037 branch and 591 broker and 38 926 agency insurance and 212 last assessor in Iranian insurance market uh, share of premium by line motor and health in, is big share in Iranian insurance and other lines and uh, And uh, about foreign investments guide uh, considering law related to development plan plans, uh, foreign investors are permitted to contribute to the Iranian insurance sector. Foreign investment uh, absorption by local insurance company, for example, transfer of shares to foreign entities, and uh, in accordance with Act establishment, the share transfer of the Iranian non governmental insurance institute to foreign natural and legal persons up to 20 percent is subject to approval by Central Insurance of Iran and up to uh, four. 49% approval by uh, Iranian Board of Ministers. And uh, based on uh, relevant laws and regulations, possible options for the partnership of foreign insurers are as follow. Make contribution to local commercial insurance companies in order to establish a joint commercial insurance company in the Islamic Republic of Iran and uh, 
establishment and operations of branch and agency or establishment and operations of contact office so that foreign insurance may obtain insurance license to do insurance operations. Uh, foreign insurance are active in Iran, uh, presently K International, PLC, independent, authorized, regulated insurance broker and underwriting agency based in Lebanon and at Lloyd's. SOS, Evasan, and NASCO reinsurance brokering uh, co company based in Lebanon. According uh, to the act of establishment of central insurance, a, a minimum deposit to be paid uh, for establish. Thanks for your attention. شكرا لك سيد مهدي نمان الحسين مدير المشاريع والتنمية في شركة التأمين المركزي استمعنا الآن إلى عروض للقطاعات الحيوية ذات الاهتمام الكبير في إيران خصوصا بعد الانفتاح الذي عرفته هذه الدولة الكبيرة منذ البدء برفع العقوبات عنها طبعا هناك أيضا مشاغل وهموم وأيضا تطلعات لقطاع رجال الاعمال في لبنان ادعوكم للاستماع الى كلمه السيد عباس فواز رئيس جمعيه رجال الاعمال الايرانيين واللبنانيين حول هذه التطلعات وايضا حول ما يمكن ان يتاتى من هذا التعاون المستجد بعد كل هذا الانفتاح تفضل سيد عباس ثانك يو جود مورنينغ ليديز اند جنتلمان اي وود سبيك ان انجلش لايك ايفربادي ايلز ديد سو there will be nothing uh, different. Uh, because of the limited time, I want to address uh, two points. Uh, one is the great potential that exists in Iran, which consists of raw material, manpower, and a lot of other resources. All available resources needed to establish an industry or a uh, and infrastructure projects, whether it be it raw material, manpower, energy, whatever it is, is available in Iran. Iran provides better than any other country in the world these potentials. Great industrial countries, including China, does not enjoy this position. This position is unique in Iran because of the many great raw material resources, the human resource, the energy resource, the water resource, the industrial output, the neighboring market, Iran lies in a great and unique position. I appeal, as a Lebanese businessman who has been working in Iran for some time, to the Lebanese business community to take advantage of this position. How can we take advantage of this position? This position, the Lebanese can play a leading role in establishing all sorts of businesses in Iran. Iran is a big country and it's a big market and it has potential to great neighboring markets for export. Uh, we can in establish ourselves in industries, in trade, in tourism, in services, in many other areas as well, health, insurance, banking, whatever. Lebanese are capable of doing that. We are uniquely positioned to trade between Iran and other countries in the world. I know there are some difficulties in reaching such a decision. From my experience, Many of the Lebanese businessmen that we took to Iran uh, to transact business in Iran, uh, we had many conferences, many meetings, many openings. We were welcomed greatly by the Iranian authority. The Iranian authority welcomed Lebanese businessmen. In fact, they encouraged Lebanese businessmen to do business in Iran. And uh, we have opened the really Frankly, they have an open-door policy 
toward Iranian uh, Lebanese business relation. They want Lebanese businessmen to come into Iran. And this is a very appreciated step by the Iranian authority, which we felt every time we went to Iran, we felt that the Lebanese business community is welcome in Iran. So therefore, it is a great uh, opportunity to try and take advantage of. We have already a lot of Lebanese businessmen in Iran. Previously, a long time ago, we had some great Lebanese businessmen who endured all the difficulties, like the Jumail. Uh, they've been there before the revolution. They continue to be there. It's uh, business-like going on since nothing changed since the revolution. There are other businessmen that were there before the revolution and after the revolution. They continue to enjoy good uh, business atmosphere in Iran. And lately, after the signing of the agreement, some consulting Lebanese firms have established offices in Tehran. Lebanese businessmen that would like to do business in Iran can take opportunity or advantage of these firms to consult them, to ask them in which way to go about. We also in the Lebanese Iranian Business Council have also some openings. We can also direct Lebanese businessmen on how to go about in investing or doing business in Iran. As uh, for, it's good for you to know that Iran has in its economic and finance ministry an organization that's called FIPA, Foreign Investment Protection Agency. This agency uh, issue out foreign investment license. The foreign investment license is uh, tantamount to a, a state guarantee for the foreign investor. It allows the foreign investor uh, to finance his project from within and without Iran. It allows him 100% ownership of the project that he runs, 100% foreign ownership. It allows him many other guarantees and opportunities. Uh, so that agency is there. Uh, Lebanese investors who would like to invest can go to that agency, simply apply, do a feasibility study, present it, and it would be uh, accorded accordingly to their feasibility study. Uh, there are other opportunities. We don't have all the time needed to explain all these things. I see it's already peeping on me, so <laughs> I have to let go. Uh, so we call on all of you to try a chance in Iran, and it's a very unique place to invest. Thank you for coming, and we appreciate it. شكرا لسيد عباس فواز رئيس جمعية رجال الأعمال الإيرانيين واللبنانيين على هذه المداخلة وأيضا على إبدائه الاستعداد لمن يرى برجال الأعمال بالاستثمار هناك في تقديم المشورة والعون. شكرا لك سيد عباس. الآن كلمة للسيد فراس صفي الدين وهو عضو متفرغ في مجلس إدارة هيئة الأسواق المالية في لبنان سيعرض لنا ما الذي يمكن أن يقدمه هذا القطاع في إطار التعاون والانفتاح على إيران وربما في أكثر من قطاع في قطاع الأسواق المالية وأيضا قطاع البورصة تفضل سيد فراس الكلمة لك Good morning um, As my fellow panelists demonstrated here today uh, the sheer size and the diversity, for that matter, of the Iranian economy post-sanctions is bound to alter the uh, uh, powers of economies in the region and specifically within the GCC countries. Uh, in my opinion, the shortest path to investing in Iran is the capital markets. Why the capital markets? For starters, uh, the capital markets are very well regulated in Iran. In fact, uh, the uh, Security and Exchange Organization of Iran has just finalized its filing with IOSCO. IOSCO is the International Organization for Securities Worldwide. For you to file uh, with IOSCO uh, demonstrates the level of the regulation. It means that regulations are best business practice, they're uh, according to international standards, and makes it easier for Iran to deal with other regulators in the region. Uh, the, again, the stock exchange in Iran today 
The reason why I would say that uh, getting into the Iranian market is through the capital markets, I have many reasons for that. For starters, again, the Iranian stock exchange is, the least you could say about it is it's undervalued. It's undervalued. Today, the price to earning trade is around 5.5% and the dividend yield goes between 15 to 17% on average. If we compare that to the MSCI index of frontier markets, similar rank markets, it is uh, trading at 12.5%. That's more than double. And the dividend, is, dividend yield is 3%. Imagine the gap. So it is definitely an underrated market. The second reason is uh, that the regulators in Iran and the government in Iran have uh, launched the FIPA Act, which protects investors. It's the uh, Foreign Investment and uh, Promotion uh, uh, Act uh, and protection. They, they, they protect the investors from any nationalization if it's going to happen. So this is, again, another safety gauge. The third reason is because uh, the uh, labor force in Iran is one of the youngest and the highest educated labor forces. And to add to that, they are, they, the, the, the wages are equivalent to that of Vietnam, which is extremely low. I mean, what else does an investor want? Uh, thirdly, it's easier for investors to look at companies that are listed. You have access to their uh, figures. Um, uh, you can identify, because the sanctions have not been lifted totally, you can identify which section and which segment of the uh, economy to invest in. Again, the stock exchange in Iran is highly diversified. Uh, it's unique in the region. You have more than 37 industries there. How can you invest in the stock exchange? There are two ways to invest in Iran in the stock exchange. One is to go directly. For you to go directly, again, you have to have an investment code. And that investment code, according to the authorities, takes seven days to be granted, which is a quick uh, turnaround. Again, the investment code is only given to make sure that the money is a foreign money and to fall under the FIPA Act. Your money is protected from any change of regime, from nationalization. Uh, again, you are tax exempt from capital gain. So this, all of these are a basket of incentives that make access to the capital markets more uh, inviting. Uh, one more thing I would like to add is uh, to look at it from the Lebanese diaspora, the theme of this uh, event itself. I find uh, two ways where we can cooperate with Iran. Again, we can have a bilateral MOU between both regulatory authorities, similar to what the Koreans have done with the Iranian authority last week. Uh, doing that bilateral MOU will open up uh, the market to capital players. We will coordinate in terms of regulations. Uh, we will coordinate in terms of ease of doing business of financial institutions in Lebanon. Uh, capitalizing on the diaspora in Lebanon, again from the theme of the event, as we've seen today, we had the vice chairman of a Russian bank who is a Lebanese. Uh, the Iranians have to notice that. Lebanese are very active in the financial sector and they're spread everywhere. You can find a CEO of a bank in Asia, a CEO of a fund, hedge funds, they're all Lebanese. This diaspora, we can capitalize on that. That's for starters again. Another thing, migrating from um, uh, the capital markets, the Lebanese diaspora, if you have a population of 80 million uh, and you're actually servicing a 300 million read, uh, within the region, the Lebanese diaspora can open a market of almost 500 million for the Iranian products. They're placed in Africa, they're placed in Europe, they're placed in Asia, Latin America. Uh, so this is what I have to say for the capital market. Thank you. Shukran Said Firas Safiuddin, Al-Udum Mutafadir Fi Darat Hayat Al-Aswaq Al-Maliyya Fi Lubnan. الآن السادة والسيدات الحاضرين نتوقف مع عرض سيقدمه لنا رجل الأعمال والخبير في شؤون النفط والغاز وأيضا في قطاع البناء والشركات القابضة وكذلك في إمكانيات الحصول على الامتياز الفرنشايز السيد مهدي فيروزان تفضل سيدي
بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم I really thank you for this conference and the invitation that we received from the minister and my dear friend uh, Ambassador Eli Tork. And very thank you for you to listening to these informations. And I would like to ask one question. I am originally Lebanese and living in Iran and I am Lebanese Iranian businessman. So I want to ask, I want to uh, 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 answer to one question. Why I am doing business in Iran? I, myself. In this show or presentation, I am giving you the important essentials, facts and figures about Iran, why I do my business as a holding, not as a small business in Iran. So I believe that Iran-Liban has a strategic partnership, historical and moreover for you. So I'm going to Iran at a glance and opportunities. Okay, we talk about the population, but important things in Iran is uh, we have 78 million and 71 are in the city, the other are the rural city, but I look at Iran as 600 million neighborhood. It's not, it's not just 80 million, because when we go to another slide, you will see that our business with Dubai, with Emirat is how much. So you can see even which we are not so pleased now together, but you can see that a lot of business we are doing with Dubai. So it means that with 6 million, you are looking at. Okay, another thing, why Iran? Look at this. Uh, oh, sorry, I forgot to. This is the uh, uh, slides for it. And if you see that World Economic Forum assigned Iran as 28 foreign market size, uh, index so 28 so I go to that slide this the roads if you see and you see that Iran is the center of the traditional historical modern routes from Silk Road to East West corridor to North South corridor so it's in the center whenever you want when I want to go to Iran I went from Iran Iraq Ir uh, Lebanon Iraq uh, Iran so from the other side, if you want to come, there are two main roads, Silk Road and East-West Road, both joined in Iran. So from the transportation, you can see the uh, uh, advantage. Another slide, you can see that by the growth rate year 2014, GTB increasing 3%. Look at this slide, in 1990, uh, nine, uh, uh, I think that in 1995, our uh, business was 44% based on non-oil and gas business, 56 on gas. But now, after the sanction, war, a lot of things, now we are concentrated or we are bound to oil and gas 23%. But the other business, like road, like manufacturing, wholesale, retailing, transportation, communication, which is very important now in Iran, communication. So you can, you can have a very signal significant support for the telecommunication. So now 23 is oil and gas. The other is the other business. Okay. Another, which is the Iranian population. You can see how young is Iran. 32% of Iranian People are 23, uh, uh, 23, 24 million of them are young between the uh, less than 34, 32, up to, uh, uh, below to 19, 19, up to 33 years old, uh, 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 organizing Iran. 23, 20 point million, 24 million population of young people. How, and it means that these young 
country has energy and has science and has raw material. How? In the last, in the, uh, another slide, you can see that the biz, uh, it is the countries with the most engineering uh, uh, graduate, Iran, based on the four best statistics, is the first in the world having engineers per capita. And it's the third as the numbers. We are looking at India, China, and others, but Iran. So when you have raw material, you have the uh, young generation, you have 80 million, 600 million population around Iran. And the next is, is slide, which is the expenses in Iran for investors. The energy cost in Iran, comparing the cost of electricity, Iran less than USA, Turkey, Japan, Italy, uh, 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 Britain, and the minimum wages, Iran is the less than Malaysia, China, Turkey. So you can see these, these essential elements can help me to answer the question. Okay, another slide which... How is Iran now? 99 airports, of course, domestic international. 85% of the people using the telephone, normal telephone, penetration of a smartphone is 50.5%. Uh, you know, a smartphone is everything today for exchanging idea, like telecommunication, getting information. How, how, how aggressive this young country is going to get the knowledge, to exchange the knowledge, to get the information. It's another thing. And the rail and the other you will see. Okay, the export, as I said to you, the, uh, the export, if you see here, with South Korea export and import, with India, with UAA, our export was 4 billion and import was 3 billion and 8. So, even I told you that we are not so in a good uh, feeling, but it's happened like that. And total export is about, uh, uh, I can say, 36.5 billion, and the import is uh, 53.5 billion. So now, what is the trend of me and private sector era? It is important, only things that I can communicate with you. These are the trends. Iran private sector, PPP, private public partnership, decided to transforming to global competitive business, increasing energy efficiency, increasing export trade and transit with the neighbors. Of course, neighbors is the essential and priority. Increasing awareness to the environment. Iran is doing very carefully uh, to protect uh, the, the environment. Attention to innovation, knowledge-based building industry based on regional industrial. We believe that we could forecast. And now the business around Iran and neighbors are too much uh, 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 in numbers. These are the projects that I always, whenever I go to the world, I used to uh, 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 introduce it. Because a lot of them have the feasibility study done now. If you go to the Minister of Petroleum, you ask for the project, they, they introduce the project with the feasibility study. During the sanction, we were not uh, sleeping. We start working on the feasibility study in power plant, in agriculture, in food and industry. But the last important thing, a message to the Lebanese, it's the last, is we are working with the world. I went to Austria, to Italy, to France to present Iranian private sector. But they are all French or Austrian or uh, Italian. They are in this regulation. But Lebanese are around the world, everywhere you are and we are successful. So we can use the advantage of each territory's advantage of the uh, free uh, access of each country to use it to have in Iran with these advantages. Thank you very much.
شكرا لك سيد مهدي فيروزان وقد قدم لنا عرضا موسعا حقيقة حول الإمكانيات الاستثمار في إيران والعناصر المشوقة والمشجعة على كل حال الآن نتوقف ربما مع عرض أو مسيرة عرض لمسيرة نجاح عائلة لبنانية ذهبت إلى إيران واستطاعت رغم كل العقبات والصعوبات وربما أيضا يعني الأوضاع السياسية في المنطقة من أن تثبت نفسها وأقدمها في إيران وأن توسع من أنشطتها وهي اليوم حاضرة ممثلة بسيد باتريك الجميل الذي سيقدم لنا عرضا لهذه المسيرة على مدى السنوات وأيضا لما يمكن أن يبرع أو يدخل به المستثمرون اللبنانيون إن أرادوا تفضل سيد باتريك Ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor to be here today, a unique time in which we can build a bridge between Lebanon and Iran for enriching cultural exchanges and mutual economical interests. I want to take a brief moment to share the history of my family, the Iranian opportunity, and how we can be supportive. It all started in Iran for us in the early 20s. My grandfather trading various goods between Lebanon, Baghdad at the time, and Iran. To put it into a historical context, it took weeks to travel back and forth at the time. He was very Lebanese in the sense that he saw business opportunities everywhere like all of us are gathered here today. He, even, he envisioned traveling as the next big thing. And what would be needed for travelers at the time It was suitcases. Suitcases were made out of cardboard covered by leather. And this is how KPM Paper Mill started by producing cardboard out of recycled paper. My father took over the business of industry, over trading in 1940s, making paper from straw and waste paper rather than cut trees, a real pioneer in recycling by following his Lebanese cousin's footsteps. He extended the business into an integrated paper and packaging company in Iran, and today the food starch industry. In Lebanon, as well as in Iran, my father's mission was being to help the needy. In 1969, my grandfather founded the SOS village in Persav. Today we have a It homes 100 children. In 71, my father was a co-founder in Karizak Charity Foundation. In 69, my grandfather founded the SOS village in Persav. Today, we have a, it homes 100 children. In 71, my father was a co-founder in Karizak Charity Foundation.